microbial control and maybe begin another one called How Life Began. Because uh, three straight hours of lecture can get awful. And so I want to break them up a little bit. Um, Tuesday, you're going to have the little weekly test, but it'll only be over whatever we cover tonight, and maybe one or two questions on staying just to fill in and to get 25 questions. So it won't be many, uh, but it'll be a good way to get, you know, crunch up a good score. Um, we will finish chapter nine in the next class and get halfway through chapter four, which is the longest chapter of all. Uh, we already talked to you about the blue ones. Uh, there'll be no no at micro 40 this weekend or call the prof. You can email me though if you have questions. Um, I'm hoping that I'll have your lab practical one, uh, the big one, you know, the exam you took by the end of class tonight, maybe by 9, 9.15, something like that. That's what I'm hoping. Um, I handed back the other class and discovered that I forgot to add 50 points. So I forgot to add the back of the scan chart. So had to re they're being redone right now. Uh, the midterm is a week before Turkey Day. And that is, remember, all the cards plus chapters 9 four, and 4 through 8. It may not be these two, but it'll definitely be that. And so uh, be sure and start working on what is called the midterm exam or lab practical 2. Lab practical two is the cards, and the midterm is these chapters. Uh, I guess that's it for announcements. Um, I am having kind of a meltdown. I'm sure you're aware that um, we have absolutely no help. Um, since June, nothing has been done in, in the microbiology lab. Uh, so all of the slants and all the cultures and all the stains that you've been doing, I have been working like 24 hours a day trying to get this for you. Uh, we're supposed to have a technician. He has not lifted a finger except to fix nine microscopes since June. Um, so as a result, I'm having a near meltdown and I'm much, you know, normally I have your papers within seven days of grading. You can ask my other classes. I'm behind. Uh, I may be even more bitchy than usual, and um, I don't know how I'm going to hold it together. Really, if you want to know the truth, um, the autoclave supposedly stopped working sometime between June and, and sometime between July and September the 1st, um, but it was not reported. So if it wasn't reported, then I couldn't know, do what it was to fix it. Um, and I didn't know it until the uh, three days before class started that it was broken. Well, we can't do anything without the autoclave. So none of the dirty tubes from all the 51 tests that all students in seven sections of micro have been autoclaved or washed from last June. Uh, None of the media has been made, none of the auger has been made, none of the bacteria have been transferred, none of the stains have been made, refilled, nothing has been done. I've had to do it. I've been going over to Glendale College to get my assistant over there to take over some of our augers to get to have her help make it for Glendale College. Then I bring what is secondhand there over and use it for four classes here then I take it back over there to autoclave wash and do. So I, uh, these are my excuses. You know when you tell me this is my excuse and I say that's your problem? I'm sorry, but that's my problem too. And I know it's not your fault and has nothing to do with you. And all I can say is I'm sorry. Uh, I've reported to everybody I can report it to. I have asked for help. I have told them that I cannot survive and that if I don't get some help, I cannot provide what you are required to get, but, yeah. Are you able to get um, volunteers from this class? Yeah, there's anything else we can do? Well, next Friday and Saturday, I am 
prevailing upon my friend that I've worked with for 28 years as a technician over there to come over here and help me if our autoclave is fixed because I've got to find $800 between now and next Wednesday to fix to finish fixing the autoclave if it's fixed by next Thursday which the technician told me I mean the you know the company that own that services the autoclave said it it could be fixed if I found the money by next Thursday uh, then she's going to come over and I'm going to ask some micro 40 students as many as they can to come in and help me wash test tubes and, and help me make media next Friday and Saturday and um, so I may if if things fall together um, actually be putting an announcement and asking in class if you're registered in micro 40 and you want to get double time come and help me but you know between 8 and 6 p.m. on these days so yes I will ask as soon as I have, I can't work with anything if I don't have an autoclave. So there's nothing I can do now. I can make up some more stains, but you know, I've done that. So there's not much else I can do right now until, one, I have to beg for the autoclave to be fixed. And I told the guy to go ahead and fix it anyway, and I would find money on the street or something, you know, if this college doesn't pay for it. <laughs> so I don't know what. Anyway, these are my excuses, and that's why your papers and stuff are late. And well, what we do is we do the best we can with what we've got. So let's do what we have to do today. And what we're going to do today is talk about the blue cards, which are a lot easier to do. Most people don't think so; but they really are. A lot easier to do than the procedure cards. And remember, by the next class, I hope you will have your procedure cards on paper. Uh, if you want to know how many and where they are, if you'll just go to Lab Manual Flashcard. Go down here, and there's a list of the um, approximately 30 um, procedure cards. If you're looking through this list and you don't have a clue about one of them, just put a title on that page and leave it blank, and when we would go over in class, we'll fill it in. But don't leave all of them blank because you can't write that fast. So. Tuesday when we come in, the first thing we're going to do is take the cards that you've made and go over them and correct them in class and talk about the ones that you didn't understand that you need me like the most people don't understand what a card for drops is and what a card for the pH indicators is. And I'll show you and explain that. Um, today we're going over the other cards, which is the other 28, which are called the blue cards or experiment cards. But I just want to tell you, the easiest way to do this is to get in a group of four or five and split it up. In other words, if you got in a group of five and each of you did six, you'd have all the procedure cards. Remember, it's not cheating if you work together on this. This is a group effort. You're making a lab manual that should all be essentially the same anyway. So work together in groups over the weekend or whatever. You can even do it over email or Skype or something like that, you know. So that's my advice is, you know, divide them up and uh, do them that way if you haven't. Most people have already got a good start on their procedure cards and it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, I'll ask you to make three of the blue cards by Tuesday just to see if, you know, you don't know what you don't know until you actually do it. I mean, I can explain it and you can say I understand and you can read it, but until you actually have to make one, you really don't know what you don't understand. So. I'll tell you to make the first three blue ones by Tuesday, and then we should be OK. Yeah? So the purple cards are the procedure cards. And the blue cards are the experiment. Yeah, they're just blue buttons. You don't have to be cards that are purple or blue. I mean, actually, somebody said, where am I going to find blue colored cards? <laughs> and I understood that, that I keep saying that, but that's the not what I really mean. Mm -hmm. Tell her at the art supply. Yeah, what now? At the art supply. Oh, actually, yes, you can. <laughs> but remember, on paper, you don't have to have on cards Tuesday. Just on paper, so you have something to correct, take home, complete, and then glue on the cards. Yeah. Now you have some of those um, procedures there in purple and other interlacing. Do you have that? Uh, I think. Um, oh, this. Oh, no, no, no. That was just to keep it from looking too incredibly all. You know, people wouldn't pay attention to it. I don't think there's a reason for it. Okay. 
I'm an idiot. All right. So anyway, let's do the blue cards. They're actually, I don't know, I think it's twisted, but I think they're fun. Maybe it's the OCD. All right, so let's talk about the blue cards. These are called the experiment cards. They're the blue buttons. And they are extremely easy to do. They're also extremely easy to memorize. Remember, we've got to memorize these. Now, remember how we made that wonderful little chart that almost everybody but two people in here did for the back of their Scantron for the photos? Why didn't you call those two people? Never mind. Uh, anyway, uh, there are some people that just put random letters and put things after it. They didn't make the little grid, but never mind. I'm not being bitchy. There's a little uh, format that makes this easier. So here's a little format. First of all, there is a whole bunch of titles for each one of these experiments. That was so nice of somebody. Um, and they didn't even give me their last name, so I can't be like, who is it? You? It was you? Mm, remember that face. <laughs> I'm seeing an A. No. I'm not easily bought. It usually takes at least three. Um, so anyway, um, each card has several titles. And I don't care, remember, how you put them together. But if it was me, I would not use them as flashcards with the title on the back and this information on the front. I would actually have them in a flip folder like this, maybe have the title up here and the procedure with the picture down here in big font so you can lay it open like that because this is to be a lab manual that you fold open on one page and you can follow directions as simple as possible without having to go <laughs> in small font. Okay? But, like I said, you can do it any way you want to. You can be your own designer. I don't care. Um, I do ask, of course, that the first card have your name, your you know last name, first name, blah, blah, ID number, class, full. 2011, and that you either have them all alphabetized or you have an index card. Does everybody understand that? So don't separate them into procedure cards and experiment cards. Alphabetize them all together by the first letter of the first title or have an index card and then arrange them any way you want, saying like phenol red bross is on page 62. So you can do it either way. Somebody you're giving me that? Well, <laughs> Who doesn't understand? You gave me that. Well, did you not get it? No. Okay. Okay. This person did them alphabetized. So auger plate test starts because it starts with an A. All right. So anyway, they just did them alphabetically. Uh, you can also just have put them in any order you want. Have an index card. Okay. Fine. Can you pass that around? Yeah. What about having like tabs? Like, yep, you can do that too. <laughs> okay. Um, I did find somebody doing an iPhone oh, picture of every card. I will slap you if I see that. Cannot. Take pictures, take home, and copy. Why not just work together? Because if you're just doing it that way, you're not going to learn anything. It's not going to be processed in your brain. It's just going to be printed out from your iPhone. You probably are wondering what I'm doing. I have some very good sets. Oh, I don't know. But I thought I'd pass around so you just glance through them. Is there an email list that's going around? Is there an email list? I think I did it to you. It's just to put your email on it, so um, I can send you the link to the video with your email. You have my email. Okay, so if I gave you a set of test cards, just pass them back and down your row. Each row has one. All right, anyway, so where to find this information? All right, so if you go to... the website and you click on unknown test, what you're going to see is this. Come on, baby. There you come. Stop!
All right, so you're going to go to unknown test and look at the blue card list. You'll notice that phenol red sorbitol broth, carbohydrate fermentation broth, phenol red mannitol broth, phenol red lactose broth, anything that says phenol red carbohydrate all leads to the same page. That means that all those tests are one card. You don't have to make a different one for phenol red maltose than you do phenol red dextrose. They're all phenol red tests. So when you click on a button, it's going to bring up a page, and at the top, it's going to have the alternative titles, all the titles for that test. So that's what you put on your title page. That this is sometimes called the phenol red sugar broth, it's sometimes called the carbohydrate broth, it's sometimes called the phenol red fermentation test. Any of those titles refer to the same experiment. Now, how do we name experiments? Listen, I see people picking their nose, you know, stuff like that. Got that look. <laughs> I'm here, but I'm not here. All right. How do we name these tests? We name them by what we start with. The enzyme that allows us to go from what we start with to what we end with, or what we end with. For instance, nitrate broth test can be called the nitratase test, because that's the enzyme that does it, that we're looking for. It can be called nitrate broth, because we start with potassium nitrate broth. Or it can be called the nitrite test, because we're looking to see if the microbe can break down nitrate to nitrite using nitratase enzyme. So that's how we come up with the three different titles. What we start with, the enzyme that allows us to do it, or what we end up with. That's how we name these things. Just to give you a hint of where these things come from. All right, so where do you get the title? At the top of the website page. And remember, it's titles. All right, the next thing on every page, if you look at it on the blue button, every page has the, everything has these things on it. The next category is either in bold or some color. You're going to type these categories or format or columns, whatever you want to call them. Uh, not columns, they are rows. Chemistry, ink inoculation, incubation, evaluation. Cautions and comments. So every blue card is going to have these, what, six things. A title, and then chemistry, inoculation, incubation, evaluation, cautions, and comments. Now it's very simple. Remember, you've got to memorize these, so we want as little as possible on every card. So, how to do it? It's very, very, very simple. You already know where to get the title. Where do you get the chemistry? Two sites. One if you're brilliant, one if you're me. Okay. All right, if you're brilliant, you take the atlas out and you look up the name of that test in the atlas and it will give you the chemistry of that experiment assuming that you understand organic chemistry. It assumes that you have taken two semesters of organic chemistry and that you understand it and so that is the level that the atlas is written in. You can get the chemistry from either of two places. From the first and second paragraph of the website or you can look that test up in the atlas and it will tell you the chemistry. But remember this is written higher level.
assuming that you've had organic chemistry, so it may not be as easy to understand or memorize. But, again, it's totally your choice. It's a free world. All right, so remember, atlas or first and second paragraph of the website. So let's look at our example card that we're doing, phenyl red carbohydrate raw. Where would you find the information for that? Pick it up, go down to the second paragraph, and it says, This test is done to determine the products of sugar fermentation. A carbohydrate broth containing phenyl red pH indicator is prepared at 7.4 when it is red. Uh, this broth contains three essential ingredients, 1% of the carbohydrate to be tested, and these are the list of the ones we test, nutrient broth, and the pH indicator phenyl, uh, phenyl red. This nutrient broth is giving you a slight red. It supports the growth of most organisms that are able to ferment the sugar. The test organism is inoculated in a broth. The bright letter indicates that it is able to use that carbohydrate and the pH has fallen to around 6.9. Gas is indicated by a bubble. So basically, it's that is the chemistry. You can even shorten it and take the gobbledygook out of it and make it less. All right, what did I just say and what does it mean? you're going to get a test tube. Remember, in microbiology, all liquids are called broths. Even if it's water, we call it a broth. I don't know why, because. Inside this broth, you will see a little upside-down tube called a durum tube. That is used to measure gas. When you eat something, what happens if you can use it, if your body uses it? You change that sugar to acid. That's what we're doing here. You're going to, we're going to put a sugar in there, and the bacteria you put in it can use it. It's going to change the pH to acidic. It's going to turn yellow. Now, sometimes you eat things and you just get energy. Sometimes you get energy plus <laughs> gas. Same thing with microbes. That's what the durum tube is for. If it's positive, you look inside the durum tube and see if you see a significant bubble. How big does the bubble have to be to be gas? First of all, it has to be positive to be gas. If you don't eat anything, can you get energy from it? No. All right. So it has to be positive to have gas, and the bubble has to be as big as your little finger. Not that finger, not that finger, that finger. <laughs> that little finger nail. That's how big it has to be. If it's an itsy bitsy teeny weeny bubble, it's an artifact of preparation. When we drop that little durum tubes in it, sometimes we get a teeny weeny itsy bitsy little bubble. So don't be looking for teeny weeny itsy little bubbles. It's got to be a bubble that big is your little fingernail to count as gas. All right, so we give this to you and it's red. You put your bacteria in it and cook it. If your bacteria can eat the sugar, because that's the only thing in there for it to eat, it will change the phenol red pH indicator from reddish pink to yellow. Any color but yellow is negative. So what is orangey yellow? Negative. What's pinkish yellow? Negative. What's orangey yellow? What's uh, yellow with a faint trace of orange? Negative. What's yellow? Positive. That's it. Now, how do you tell? When you take it out, you mix it up, and you hold it up against white paper. Don't hold it up against a yellow wall. How will you tell if it's yellow if you hold it up against something blue? You have to hold it against white paper to tell yellow. And you have to mix it because it's called gravity. Things settle, so you'll have layers. You might have white and yellow and orange, and when you mix it up, the whole thing's yellow. That's good. If you mix it up and it's orange, it's negative. Put it back in. When you're cooking, um, let's see, when you're cooking a cake and you take it out early and the center is still soft, what do you do? Stick it back in the oven. Same thing here. If it's not 
positive, you put it back in until it's been seven days. But we'll talk about that. So this is the phenyl red. How many do we do? Mostly in every class, we do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sometimes we, you know, we do seven different phenyl red tubes. So there's going to be seven red baskets. And what are they going to look like? They're going to look like that. That's phenyl red. And if they're positive, it'll look like that. This is phenyl red pH indicator. It just changes the color when the, when the acid is produced. So if it's positive, then you look to see if it's got a bubble. That's it. It's really easy. So anyone not understand what's going on? All right, so there. Sorry, I'm allergic to chalk. All right, inoculation means how do you get the bacteria <coughs> Remember, the purpose of your whole lab is to learn how to handle bacteria, grow bacteria, stain bacteria, and run 51 tests to identify a bacteria that I hand you. I will hand you a tube just like you got for the lab practical with a number on it. Your job is to first do those stains on it, write down the information, then grow it up in a large amount, then run all 51 tests. Collect the data, follow a dichotomous key, Get the name of the back, the scientific name of the bacteria. Write a paper. So that's the whole purpose of the rest of the lab. So anyway, how do you get the unknown that I give you into the various 51 tests? That's called inoculation, and there are only five ways. Isn't that nice? So you have approximately 58 cards, and there are only five ways to do the inoculation. So is that easy to learn? Can you learn five things? Mm -hmm. Which is easier, five or 58? Five. Five. That's why I teach it this way. Okay, so all you have to do is look at the title to decide how to inoculate it. If in the title it says broth, then you inoculate it loop. Dip. Heat and cool a loop, scoop up a little tiny bacteria on it, and dip it. That's it. How people in the other class said, so you scoop up that whole loop full of bacteria, and then you jam it in there, and you bang it around until you <laughs> knock that off. No, it's microbiology. You dip it a quarter of an inch deep with as little as you can get on there like you were making a stain. And it is inoculated. Dip. Not all the way down to the bottom, not halfway deep, just dip. Quarter of an inch. Boom, you're done. So, how would you, you, inoculate nitrate broth? Just uh, a, a deep is okay. Loop dip. Loop dip. Okay, how would you inoculate Vogue's Proskauer broth. Oh my gosh, she's smart. How would you inoculate metal red broth? Oh my god. How about you? How would you inoculate metal red lactose broth? Oh my god. Everybody's already got it. Do you need to take a break now? Just see. I'll wait till you do. Okay. I've got 30 minutes. Okay. I'm going to leave it at 10, so I'll come back. Okay, I'll, I'll rush. All right, so the next one is slant. Does anybody know, not know what a slant is? Because we've been using them every day. All right, what does a slant look like? It's a test tube with a great big long slant in it of auger. We pour the auger in there, and we lay it over at an angle, and it makes this long slant, which gives us a large area, sterile area, to grow more bacteria. So how do you inoculate a slant? Loop, zigzag. This is not a paper you buy at 7-Eleven to smoke. <laughs> okay, this, when you want to make a lot of something, do you go a straight line or do you zigzag? That's right, which is longer, a straight line or a zigzag? A zigzag, you pull it out this long, you squish it up, it's that. A straight line's just that. So if we want to grow a lot of something, we take our loop with as little as we can get on it, just like we've been doing everything. It's microbiology. 
You stick it in there and you go, oops, let's use green. It's pretty. What's the purpose of this? To grow as much bacteria under sterile conditions in this tiny little sterile area as we can so that we can perform 51 tests with it. Use it to scoop out and inoculate all the tests. Duh! So, how would I inoculate peptone iron slant? Loop zigzag. Wow. All right, next. The next kind of media that we hand you, sorry, is called a slant D. Now a slant deep is a shallow slant plus a deep. A deep in microbiology is auger poured flat into a tube. So if you combine a slant and a deep, what do you get? A slant deep. Oh my god. <laughs> now, all you have to do to inoculate a deep is take your needle you thought that was something without a wire. That thing in your drawer that doesn't have a loop on the end of it is called a needle. It actually is an implement we use. And you pick up a tiny bit of your unknown on it and you stab it down the middle of a deep, in and out the same hole. It's very important that you go in and out the same hole and that you go three quarters of the way deep. That's how to inoculate a deep. So, how do you inoculate a peptone iron slant deep? Needle and so. Okay. Uh, how do you inoculate a uh, triple sugar iron deep? Needle stat. Needle stat. All right. So now, we fought the next one we have is combining a slant and a deep. Now, what do you think we would do? We would do a needle stab plus a zigzag, loop zigzag. It's inoculated two different ways. Why? Because some bacteria grow with oxygen and some grow without it. So those with are, on, are tested on the slant and those that are anaerobic are tested by the deep. That's why it's called a slant deep. It's a combination of a slant plus a deep. So how do we inoculate these? We inoculate them Loop zigzag. Loop zigzag. Plus needle step. Doesn't matter which one you do first. <laughs> Both. Okay, that's four of the five ways we inoculate. Is there anyone not understand slant deep? So, clicker's iron, slant deep. You, how do we inoculate it? Um, needle stab, loop zigzag. Okay. Uh, Simmons citrate, slant deep. Right. So, everybody's got slant deeps. All right. The last one is plate deeps. A plate deep is you get the auger. Like I said, all, all, all deeps are just auger solid flat line in a tube. But this one's to make a plate with. So what, what you do is you melt, pour, and cool a plate. Then you loop, line, share it. What does that mean? You take the plate that you poured the order into you take your loop and you make a one inch line. Your lab partner takes their loop and puts their unknown on a one inch line as far apart as possible. Loop, line, shared. So while anything like spirit, ooh, spirit auger, spirit blue auger plate D. Um. Loop, line, shared. Melt, pour, cool, plate, then loop, line, shared. Oh. See? So if it's got the word plate in it, you've got to melt it, cool it, melt it, pour it, cool it, and then loop line share. 
Okay? How do you melt it? You stick it in boiling water until it turns clear. Then you pour it. And we'll learn how to do that. Uh, the, per, the day of, day after the midterm, we'll pour our plates. Okay, so anyone not know how to inoculate the five ways we inoculate? That is, all the media will always be given to you in one of these names. Motility Gel Stab. Lady back in the pink. Motility Gel Stab. How do you inoculate it? 